Hey guys. So a couple things that um, I wanted to come on here and share was, I have actually an entire list, but I really wanted to talk about success with this company, with this business, um, how to find success, the different tips that certain, certain things that I truly believe will bring you success with this company. And I'm going to go down this list that I just created. Um, but I think this is super, super important. Talk quick. Y'all can probably hear my dog breathing in the background. I'm out on the porch. But and you guys can ask me questions as we go, but um, or as I go through all of these. But I know a lot of you, especially as leaders, want to find success with Scentsy, with your Scentsy business. And thanks, I'll look crazy. And a lot of you have found success, okay? But just because you have found success doesn't mean that you can't climb the ladder even more and find higher success, right? So even, even though, you know, I'm an SSD, that doesn't mean that I can't find more success with this business. So I have sat down and I wrote down like just some tips that I personally think are super important when it comes to building a successful business. Okay. So the first thing that I really wanted to talk about, um, all of these are really good points, but Number one, you have to train yourself, okay? And I'm not talking about waiting around for your sponsor or your director or your leader above you, your upline to post trainings. Like, you have to take it upon yourself to educate yourself on whatever you're struggling with, okay? So if you're struggling with booking parties, with recruiting, with conversations to recruit, with training your, um, training your frontline or your downline in general, whatever you're struggling with, it is your responsibility to go out and find trainings to help you be better in that area, okay? For example, I've been, okay, Tuck, I've been in a recruiting slump, okay? Normally, I'm recruiting two to four, five, six people a month, and recently, I've only been recruiting one to two people. That's not normal for me, so I went today, and I was like, you know what? I am going to train myself up on recruiting. You know, I know what it takes to recruit, but there's also so many different methods out there. And clearly I needed to brush up on something because I was struggling in that area. Okay. And you're going to go through times when your business is thriving. And then when your business is a little bit slower. Okay. Like right now my PRV is thriving, but my sponsoring isn't thriving like I would like it. So I went out and I took it upon myself to find a training and to brush up on my skills. Guess what guys? I watched a training this morning and I just recruited someone today. Today. That's all I needed was to go out and like refresh my recruiting skills, my sponsoring skills and go out and use them. That was my problem. I'm not using my skills like I should. That's, that's, it's as simple as that. So Go out and train yourself. If you are struggling with Facebook parties, booking parties in general, front loading your calendar, whatever it is, go out, literally YouTube it, Google it, and look it up that way. It doesn't have to be an actual Sensi training, okay? It does not have to be a Sensi training. You could be struggling with recruiting and look at other ways to recruit people and just direct sales in general versus a Sensi training, okay? So take it upon yourself, train yourself up, okay? And then while you are training yourself up, if you come across a really good training that helped you, share it with your team, share it with your downline, send a send the link in an email to your team or send, you know, your teamies a text, your frontline a text and say, hey, I watched this training today, it was bomb, you know, it really helped me with X, Y, and Z, wanted to send it to you, maybe you could you know, benefit from it as well. Okay. So that training, I will be sharing it. Um, so if you're struggling, go out and educate yourself. Okay. It's not your sponsor or your uplines. It's, it's not their job to train you. It's, it's really not. Okay. It's not their job. It's your job, especially as a leader. Okay. All right. So that's number one. Number two, you have to offer, offer the opportunity. If you are looking for success in this business, you have to grow your front line, okay? When you grow your front line, your downline is going to grow because they're watching you, 
Okay, that's that's all there is to it. If you're not sponsoring, your team's not gonna sponsor. And that's what was happening. Our team was not sponsoring last month. We had like barely anyone sponsor and that's because I wasn't sponsoring and they saw that. They were looking at me and they're like, oh, well, if Rachel's not sponsoring, why would I sponsor, you know? Rightfully so. So, you have to sponsor, you have to grow your team, okay? Now, this is where it gets tricky, and I know all of us do it, myself included, I've done it a million times, but you have to offer the opportunity to everyone. Offer the opportunity to everyone, okay? What do I mean by that? We have to stop prejudging people, and we all do it. It's a human thing, you know, it's, it's a natural human thing to prejudge people whether you're prejudging them on the way they're dressed or you're prejudging them on the way they did their makeup or the way they're standing or the way that their bitch face looks like resting bitch face okay we're all prejudging them it's it's a way of life it happens i know that a lot of us don't mean any harm by it it's just it's a natural thing so when it comes to cincy and you're prejudging people by looking at oh let's say a nurse or a doctor or a, or a lawyer or someone who makes a lot of money and you're looking at them and they're like and you're like oh she would never be interested in Cincy you know she makes all this money she doesn't need Cincy as a side hustle well what if she didn't want Cincy as a side hustle for the money maybe she wanted it so she could earn trips for her family or herself for free or maybe she already loves the product so why wouldn't she want to join so she could get her products free and half off you know not everyone joins for the money not everyone joins for the trips not everyone joins for the community not everyone joins for the same reason that you might have joined okay and i like i said i'm very guilty of this very guilty of this so this is a really hard one we have to stop prejudging people because what you're doing when you're prejudging people you are making that decision for them you are making that decision for them, okay? Because when you, when you don't offer the opportunity, you're automatically saying she's not going to join. And how would she join if she doesn't even know that that's an option? Or he, or he, okay? Men like Sensi too. Remember that, men like Sensi too. So we have to stop prejudging people. I will say I have had multiple people come to me asking me to join who... asking me to join sorry i'm looking at this crazy bug um asking me to join when i should have reached out to them and asked them a long time ago oh okay that's called the wind why didn't i ask them because i was prejudging her i was prejudging that people it's happened to multiple people i already assumed that she would never be interested in sensi and guess what she was interested in sensi and she might have joined earlier if i would have just simply offered her that opportunity okay so that's number two. Number three, when you are recruiting them, and if you watch the leadership training that was last week, um, I think Desiree said this. I think, it, I think it came from Desiree. She straight up said, and she is 100% right, she straight up said that when you are recruiting, it is not about you, it's about that person. How can Cincy benefit them? Okay, and that goes back to not prejudging. Okay, how can it benefit them? Are they going to benefit from the community that we have? Because let's be real, we are in the best group in Cincy. If you don't believe that, I don't know what to tell you, but we are in the best group in Cincy. Okay, the community that we have built together is unreal. It's unreal. So people might join for the community, they might join for the money, they might join for the trips, they might join for the self confidence. Okay, they might join for the free and half off products. They might join for all of it. Okay, but you have to find how would Cincy benefit them? Are they a stay at home mom? Do they need the extra cash? Do they need something for themselves? Do they need an outlet for themselves? Right? Do they, are they shy? Do, not, do they not have that many friends? Do they need the community that we have? Right? So when recruiting, it's not about you. It's about them. Okay. So next one. Um, I can honestly say that my only competition is myself. The only person that I'm competing with ever, every month, is myself. And I'm competing 
with myself on how well I did the previous month, okay? So for this month, I'm trying to beat my sales for last month, okay? For this month, I'm trying to beat my recruiting numbers from last month. So stop comparing yourself to other consultants and really just, com really just compete with yourself, okay? Compete with yourself. What were your sales last month? Try to beat it by however much you want to beat it. Or maybe you want to match it. Stop competing with other consultants, okay? We are all on our own paths. We're all on different levels. We all are at different points of our business. So you can't compare your business to someone else's business. Especially if you just started and another consultant is, you know, six months in, two years in, like you can't compare. And the other thing is, it's like when you're comparing, it's not fair because you might be in a season of growing while another consultant might be in a season of season, a season of reaping, okay, of growing. They might be in a season of winning, okay. They might have already gone through all of those hard patches. And while you're in that season of hard patches and that other consultant that you're comparing yourself to might be in their season of winning and that's okay. We're all going to go through season, hard seasons and winning seasons. We all go through them. I go through them. Chloe Cox goes through them. Katie Lasseter goes through them. All of, we all go through them. It doesn't matter what rank you're at. A rank means nothing. Okay. A rank means nothing. It, what matters is how you work your business. What do you want a joy ride? What matters is how you work your business, okay? All right, so stop comparing. The only person you, you need to compare yourself to is who you were last month. What type of business owner were you last month, okay? There you go. All right, this is really important, and I know a lot of consultants do this, and I bet a lot of you do this. Obviously, this is up to you if you want to do this, but... I do not suggest this because I feel like when you do this, and I'm about to tell you what it is, this is my personal opinion. So if you don't agree with it, that's perfectly fine. But my personal opinion is when you do this specific act, it causes laziness. It causes complacentness. Okay? So I never hold orders ever. Never hold orders. And what I mean by that is I never hold orders for the next month. I never I never say, oh, my goal this month is 3,000 PRV. Once I hit 3,000 PRV and then I get, you know, all of these other orders, oh, well, I'm going to hold them and wait until the first of the next month. Nope. 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 Like I said, you can disagree with me, but I never hold orders. I don't care if I reached my goal. I don't care if I surpassed my goal. I am still going as far as I can go to prove, well, I just spit on my lip, to prove to myself that I can do bigger and better things than I ever imagined, okay? That is how you grow. That is how you push yourself. That is how you grow is by pushing yourself, okay? So I do not believe in holding orders. Unless you're holding orders for like a pre-order for a product that doesn't release until the first of the month, that's different because you can't order it until the first of the month. But for example, um, let's just say, I don't know. I, I think you guys get what I'm trying to say. I do not hold orders, okay? I place them so I can show myself and prove to myself that I can do bigger and better things. All right, next. I never put my kit down. What does that mean? That means I never stop working my business no matter what goes on in my life. I get it. Things go on in our lives, okay? We all are busy. We all have excuses. We all have things going on, okay? Life happens. That's what that's called is life happens. We never know what's going to happen with our lives, okay? Your kids might get sick. Your dogs might have to have surgery in my case. Your husband might have to work overtime. Um, your vacation might get canceled. Or maybe you have a random vacation show up. I never put my kit down. Ever. Ever. There's no excuse. Because what, what that does is it's telling you that it's okay. Now, it's okay to be in a it's okay to be in a 
place where you're not okay, but it's not okay to stay there, okay? What I mean by putting down your kit is not showing up, okay? What I mean by that is working your business one month and then not showing up for a month. Working your business another month and not showing up for a month, okay? That's what I mean by putting down your kit. I do not put down my kit. No matter what goes on in my life, my kit is constantly being worked, okay? Constantly. So, do not put your kit down. I literally just watched a training by Whitney Hebel, literally like right before I pressed play on this or live, and she said, if you treat your business like a hobby, you're going to get paid like a hobby. If you treat your business like a full-time job, you will get paid like you are working a full-time job. Okay? The difference is with Cincy, if you're treating it like a full-time job, you're going to get paid like a full-time job, but you don't have to work full-time hours. That's the difference between working a full-time job and working Cincy full-time. Okay? Okay? And I say that because I do Cincy full-time. This is my full-time job. I left nursing full-time to do this. I work as a nurse once a month. Once a month. Yesterday was my day once a month. And honestly, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be working as a nurse. So, I do not work. I get paid more with Cincy than I did as a full-time registered nurse with my BSN, okay? My bachelor's degree. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying. So I left nursing, make more money with Cincy, but I work maybe 20 hours a week. So cut the time in half and I enjoy what I'm doing and I don't have all the extra stress that goes along with being a nurse. Like, that's when I say that I'm living my best life. And it's because I worked my ass off to get to this point, okay? And if you guys want to do that, you can do it. Set your mind to it, make a plan, and it'll happen, okay? I didn't go into Sensi wanting... Sorry, my mom called. I didn't go into Sensi, you know, expecting to leave nursing and do Sensi full-time. No, I would have laughed in your face if, if you ever told me that I'd be sitting here doing this training as a stay-at-home Sensi consultant, work-from-home Sensi consultant. I would have laughed in your face, okay? But if that is a goal for you, you can do it. You just have to set a plan and work towards it and remain consistent, okay? All right, so don't put your kit down, okay? Treat it like a full-time job if that's what you want, okay? Um, all right, I prep for the upcoming month in my current month, okay? I don't wait till the last day to start prepping. So for example, for, for this month, for July, I was already prepping back in the middle of June, okay? The middle of June. I was already prepping for July. I wanna know where my sales are coming from. I wanna know how many consultants, or I wanna, um, I'm already having those conversations. So by the time that July comes around, I already have an idea of who I'm going to recruit, okay? Who I'm going to sponsor, who I'm going to change change their lives. I already have an idea of who I'm going to do that with, okay? Now, does it always happen where the people who I'm who I'm working on getting to join? Does it always happen that they join in the month that I'm I'm trying to get them to join? No. No. Not all the time, but I'm building those relationships. I'm planting those seeds. That's what it means. I'm planting those seeds, okay? I don't wait till the last month because what's going to happen if you wait till the last month? You're then going to be running around in that current month with like a chicken with your head cut off. Where's my sales? You know, stressing out. Stressing out. This business should not be stressful. It should not be stressful. I'm going to go back and read y'all's comments once I'm done, okay? So, that's what we call front loading. Front load your calendar, however you want to do it. If you want to front load it with parties, that's great. Okay. Um, personally, a lot of my sales are coming from social media, follow-ups and pre-orders. Okay. I had a lot of pre-orders for that letterboard warmer and that's because I promoted the crap out of it. I promoted the crap out of it. So that's where a lot of my sales are at. Y'all, it's seven days into July and I'm at 1900 PRV. I'm almost at my 2,000, seven days in. I don't think I've ever had this high of PRV one week into the month. And it's because I worked my tail off because my goal this month is 4,000 PRV. And you best bet I'm going to hit it, okay? So prep for the following month in your current month, okay? So for example, for August, start prepping at least starting next week, okay? The first two weeks of the month, I'll, I'll go into... 
I have one more thing I want to talk about, and then I'll go into how I work my personal business, okay? Um, all right, the last thing and the most important thing you have to be consistent, okay? This goes along with not putting your kit down. You have to be consistent, okay? You have to continue to show up because what happens if... Do y'all hear that frog? He's got some gills on him. If they're even gills, I don't even know what they're called anyway. Um, this goes along with not putting your kit down because this is what happens. If you are not being consistent in your business, okay? with follow-ups, with building relationships with your customers, with showing up on social media, with um, your team, you know, showing up on your team page, with showing up with training your, with your downline, your frontline, your new teamies, talking about the opportunity, okay? When you are not consistent with it, people are watching you. People are watching you constantly, okay? So if you're one of those consultants that show up when you wanna show up one week, and then two weeks go by and you haven't talked anything about Cincy, nothing about your life, nothing. And then all of a sudden, there's a join special that comes out and all of a sudden you're right there in everybody's faces. People see that. People see that. People are watching you, okay? People are creepy. People are creepy. They're watching you. People are nosy. They wanna know what's going on in your life. So they see when you're only showing up when something special is going on in Cincy land, okay? But they're also watching you. So if you're showing up constantly, you know, at least a couple times a week, you don't have to show up every day, y'all. On social media is what I'm saying. You don't have to show up every day. But when you're showing up a couple times a week, people are also watching you. Okay, like I said, people are creepy. People are nosy. They want to know what's going on in your life. So they're watching that you love this business. They're watching that you're talking about how you use your counter clean. They're watching how you're talking about how you spray your dogs down with Freshen Up Pup, okay? They're watching how you talk about the opportunity. Your team's watching how you talk about the opportunity. Your team's watching you work your business, okay? People are watching you. They're watching you. So you have to be consistent, okay? Because if you're only showing up one month out of, or one week out of a month, people are gonna see that and they're not gonna trust you. They're not gonna trust you. People don't wanna join a team that their leader only shows up when she wants to show up, okay? That's the hard part about being a business owner. There's no one to hold you accountable except yourself. So you have to be the one to make yourself show up. Is it okay to take a day off? Absolutely, absolutely. That's one of the beauties about being a business owner. Take a day off. Take two days off if you want, okay? But you can't take weeks at a time off. You can't do it. You can't do it. Unless you prep in advance for it, which that takes a lot of prepping, okay? It takes a lot of prepping, and that's a whole nother training if you plan on taking weeks off at a time, okay? But the thing is, is like you're taking, that's a whole nother training. We can go into that later on if y'all want to. Okay, so how do I personally work my business? I have changed this up a little bit. Um... Another six, another business tip. You need to have business hours, okay? Now, the business hours, me personally, they are more for my team, okay? They're more for my team, not really for my customers. Um, and that's because, yes, your team deserves your time, but you do not owe your life to your team, okay? Your business hours are going to reflect how your schedule how you what you have going on in your life okay first so for example for me mondays are my day okay you could reach out to me by email but mondays they're my business day that's when i do my follow-ups that's when i do my pws mail that's when i i'm doing all things sensi okay that's my day tuesday through thursday my business hours 10 a.m to 3 p.m okay 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's just because that's when I'm up and at it. Um, so your business hours might look different. When I was a full-time nurse, my business hours were 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I think right around something like that, um, Monday through Friday. And that's because I was super busy at work, okay? So when I got a text message, I might be able to respond to it when I'm sitting on the toilet, but I might not be able to respond to it until I got home at 6 o'clock at night. So... Your business hours, create them for what works for you, okay? And what what might work for you now might be changed. You might change it in a, a month or so, okay? So create business hours. If you're that person where you say, mm, I don't think my business is at a point where I need business hours, you're wrong. 
you're wrong because I truly believe in habits, believe in habits. And what a habit is, is that you need at least 30 days to create a new habit. Okay. Create a new habit. What is a habit? Brushing your teeth in the morning is a habit. Drinking your coffee in the morning is a habit. Okay. I truly believe that even if you have one person on your team, they need to know your business hours because it's not fair for them to message you at midnight and say, hey, what's the warmer of the month? Not fair. Not fair for you. You have a family. You have a life other than Cincy. Okay? So I, I suggest that you implement business hours early. And I say that because I didn't have business hours early. So I created a lot of people who... I created bad bad habits for my teamies because what was happening, they were messaging me at midnight and if I was up, I was responding to them. So what does that say to them? It means that it's okay to message me at midnight. When no, it's not okay to message me at midnight because I I should be in bed and even if I'm not, it's no one else's business, but I should be hanging out with my husband or my friends or my dogs or having me time, okay? So business hours, set them. Make them for you. How do I work my business? The first week of the month is for me. The rest of the weeks two and three are where I do my coaching calls. Um, and then the last week of the month is also for me. It's for first week of the month is so I get all my PRV in. I at least get my 500 in. I am working on recruiting people. I'm working on getting everything in place. Weeks two and three, I'm still you know, showing up doing all the things, but weeks two and three are more for my coaching calls, for me to train my newbies, for me to train my downline, okay, or my frontline, my leaders, and then the last week of the month is also for me. I go back to me. I make sure that I'm wrapping up loose ends of whatever I have going on with Cincy or my business, my personal business, and I'm also prepping for the next month, so when the first week of the next month comes around, then I... And getting all my stuff together so I can have another successful first week of the month, okay? That's how I work my business. You might work it completely different and that's all going to be on ba all based on how your schedule looks outside of Cincy, okay? So when I worked as a nurse full-time, 12-hour shifts, my schedule was completely different, okay? I didn't work my business like this and that's because I didn't have time to. I was working 12-hour shifts. It took me an hour and a half to get to work one way, so that's three hours in a car, Okay, plus a 12 hour shift, which usually turned into a 13, 14 hour shift. So basically what I was doing then, if you have a schedule like this, just to give you an example, I was doing follow ups on the toilet at work. I was doing um, coaching calls to and from work. Okay, um, on my lunch breaks, I was doing coaching calls. So like I said, your business hours might look different than mine. Okay, the way you work your business might look a little bit different than mine in regards to how you have it set up, how you work and everything. Okay, let me go back and read y'all's questions. How often do you reach out to people that buy from you? Do you do it weekly or monthly? So my follow-up system looks like this. If someone orders from me through PWS or through text, if I'm putting in the order, I thank them immediately. In the first 24 hours, I send them a thank you text, okay? Um, and then I wait until I write their name in my um, follow-up planner. It's actually like a mail-out system. I use Chloe Cox's, but I edited it to work to me, so I added a couple columns on the end. Um, and I write down their name. I write down what I send them. I write down if I sent them a thank you, like a thank you text. And I also write, them, write down um, if I sent them thank you mail, okay? Then I look and I have a column that says when their actual order shipped and if they received it, I write a check mark. So I follow up with them to make sure that they got the thank you I sent and I follow up with them to make sure that they got their order. And then what happens after that? Most of my customers reorder, but I will message them about a month later if they don't reorder and say, hey, just checking in. Do you need anything? Um, that's basically it. But I will say that a lot of my follow-ups too, like if they don't reorder from me in, in the first month, um, I don't necessarily follow up and say, hey, do you need refills on anything? I usually follow up. My follow-ups are like checking in on them and their family. Okay. Erin, um, let me see what you put. I hit my goal last month. I'm going on vacay for my B-Day this weekend, paying $900 for three days, two nights because my payday is covering it. Yay, girl. That's awesome. 
Tana said I really needed this ray. Go girl. Yeah, so I just wanted I just want to say like if you believe in yourself, you can go so far, okay? But you really do have to believe in yourself and you have to do all the things that I just said, okay? Um never put your kit down. Um you have to be consistent like and that's with anything in life. Like, if you're not consistent with showing up, it's the same thing. You have to be consistent with your full-time corporate job, right? If you're not consistent with your full-time corporate job, then you're going to get freaking fired. It's the same thing with Cincy, y'all. The only thing is there's no one above you to hold you accountable. Like, if you're looking for someone within Cincy for your Cincy business to tell you to show up, like, you need to reevaluate yourself, okay? Because it's not fair to look up to your director or your sponsor and wait for them to be like, hey, give me goals to hit. Hey, give me, give me a competition to do. Hey, um, I need you to text me every day and tell me to show the F up. Like, that's not fair. It's not fair to them because guess what? They are having to make them themselves show up, Okay? So if you are struggling with showing up, you need to sit back and reevaluate yourself and ask yourself what's going on. Like, why are you having such a hard time showing up? Is it because your goals aren't large enough? Is it because your why is not big enough? Like, what is it? Okay. What? My dog's over there choking. Clearly he ate something. So go ahead, Tana. You will hit director by August. Go ahead, girl. That's awesome. So that's all I had to say, guys. If you guys have questions, just drop them in the comments. Um, I will be putting this on YouTube. I'm actually going to upload it. Give me some time because my internet is slow as molasses. So it does take me extra time to upload trainings, especially because this one was pretty long. Um, but I hope you guys have a great night and I'll see you guys later. And I cannot wait to see all of you guys at Director. Okay, come this fall. Y'all just wait. If you've never had a fall with us, I need some water. <coughs> if you've never experienced a fall, a Scentsy fall, get ready because it will literally change your business, okay? If you think that your sales and your business is thriving right now, you just wait, okay? So, I love y'all and I will see you later.